Hello, my name is Gabriel Fairman, and here are my main observations from attending Gala 2024 in Valencia. Number one, I spoke to hundreds of people who went by our booth, and I noticed how people are still very confused about what LLMs are and what they aren't. For the most part, I hear people compare large language models to traditional machine translation models. And while that comparison can be done, where you can use an LLM to translate a text, just like you would use machine translation models. In our opinion, LLMs aren't about that. LLMs are about elevating the analytical capabilities that we're able to traditionally do by, for instance, being able to infer things from text that machine translation models aren't able to. So LLMs are capable of creating a bi-directional communication between the user and the text in the machine. And that's what really changes things. So if you take a look at our context sensitive translate, for instance, in ViewerWorks, it's all about fundamentally reshaping how a translator works with the text and not replacing what machine translation used to be. So I think that's a very big misconception. People try to understand LLMs as uh, whether, try to frame it as to whether or not they are an improvement over machine translation. And I think that misses the point entirely. I also see people very concerned about trying to discredit large language models. People very concerned about trying to prove that it's not effective and trying to talk about this illusion over what AI is and what it isn't. And I think we're missing the point. Uh, we surveyed over 89,000 projects done in Bureau Works over the past six months, and we could see across over 40 different locales, across dozens of domains, that the efficacy of using a context-sensitive paradigm that we propose is over 50% compared to the paradigm of using neural machine translation plus translation memories plus glossaries. So I think that that is something that we cannot understate. It's 2024 and people are still very confused about large language models. Number two, this may be something very obvious to most people, but project managers and translators, they're the cornerstones of our industry. And translators make up the vast amount of our industry when it comes to numbers. Most of the industry is composed by translators. That's just a statistical fact. And translators, they exert a very, very complex art on a daily basis. The tools that they use, they are the equivalent of the guitars that a professional guitarist uses, the violin that a professional violinist uses, the tennis racket that a professional tennis player uses. They're fundamental to their craft, to their trade. And again, I think a lot of the tools that are out there, they're not built for translators particularly, and analogously for project managers. Project managers bear immense weight of making decisions under pressure, of trying to make round pegs fit into square holes, of trying to make things that are not really reconcilable work together. Project managers, are, in my opinion, have one of the greatest stress-conducing jobs I've ever seen. Typically, not very um, rewarded when it comes to a uh, accolades perspective, when it comes to really recognizing some of the heroes in our industry. And again, similarly with software, software is able um, to produce a lot greater ease of mind, better results, less stress. But in most cases, I rarely see project managers understanding that if they use better tools, they will get to better results. And if they get to better results, their work will improve. Consequently, their ability to add value, consequently, their ability to have greater critical discernment. And I really think that the whole idea of how important the tool is really gets understated. And that leads me to point three. My belief that technology is everything when it comes to our field of translation and localization. A lot of people, in my opinion, mistakenly believe that we're in a field of language, but we're in the field of information management. Language is information, and uh, when we translate, we're basically managing information from one language to other languages. The question is, what happens in between? How, would, how do we govern? How do we understand? How do we drill into all of the little things that happen between point A and point B, language A, language B, right? And in my opinion, it's clear by the day that the technology is everything because not only how good the tech is, but most importantly, how well it's implemented and how well it weaves together. And it really strikes me 
um, how much misunderstanding there is around what the potential is for tech and the kinds of savings and opportunities that that introduces. So for instance, maybe there are two platforms working together, for instance, to produce a quote and a file is uploaded into one platform and a log file is generated. And then whether via connector or not a connector, that log file is taken in and then uploaded into a second platform. And then that second platform requires maybe 20 or 30 clicks in order to produce a quote. And that entire process may take 10, maybe 15 minutes and that has to be double checked because the more clicks, the more chances there are to make any kind of error in that quote. So it creates this kind of snowball effect where it's not just that things take longer, they're more stressful, they're more error prone. And when you talk about the paradigm in BureauWorks, for instance, where you upload files and if you have the parameters well established, you get a quote literally in five seconds that is foolproof from an error perspective, that adds immense value to the process. And that's just one example of the process that gets automated in, in BureauWorks. The other level of automation, for instance, is around placing the tasks with the translators, using algorithms that, again, ease up the pain of project managers trying to mass email people, trying to find the right person for the right job. And instead of focusing on solving one little problem at a time, again and again, because it's always the same, right? Today you're solving a problem of English into Japanese. And again, you're going to solve the same problem with now maybe English into Danish. And it's always, instead of solving things at the root, you're basically forced, because of this technology gap, you you end up being forced to solve the same thing again and again. It's very hard to move forward. Which brings me to my fourth point, which is how far we are behind in time when it comes to current potential. It's 2024, and I still see a lot of people talking about placing tasks with translators using email. I still see people talking about receiving quotes over email. I still see people talking about using multiple different systems to manage a process that is meant to be handled by a single platform like BureauWorks. And I think that for the past few decades, it's been okay to be behind in time. Translation and localization has been, for the most part, a very relationship-sensitive business. It's all about the trust that is built between the vendor and the buyer. And uh, when the trust is there, all of the technology is irrelevant. But that trust is going to be very quickly replaced in the next few years for certainty and transparency of results. So the technology is going to continue to evolve, whether people like that or not, whether people resist that or not. The fact is large language models will continue to get better. The fact is other technologies that we don't even imagine are going to arise. And if people don't understand that being ahead of the curve from a technological perspective is paramount, is number one priority to what is required to not become obsolete in our field, I am um, fearful that that will produce very negative outcomes uh, to our industry. It's very clear, right? Legacy systems produce legacy outputs. If you have state-of-the-art systems, those will produce state-of-the-art outputs. And I guess this brings me to point five, which is I heard from many people, yes, I'm very interested in upgrading my tech. I'm very interested in Bureau Works, but it's not my number one priority. And I completely respect that. I completely understand that. Focus for most translation companies is around revenue generation instead of process optimization. There's this understanding that, for instance, more revenue will solve basic problems. Maybe I have a margin problem. Well, more revenue is going to solve my margin problem. Maybe I have a process optimization problem. Well, more revenue is going to solve that as well. Process optimization is typically hard, and not only that, but it isn't doesn't seem directly correlated with results. When you take technology, for instance, and you really apply it well, there's a direct Direct correlation and I would say even causation between the process optimization and greater uh, revenue uh, potential. A good example is if you implement BureauWorks, for instance, and now you have quote automation at the fingertips of your clients and they're able to upload documents and have a quote in runtime within five seconds. That really provenly increases the probability that they're going to approve that given task. Not only that, it's all going to further differentiate you from the competition that's going to take maybe a few hours, maybe even a day to get back over a quote over email. 
So when you deploy technology correctly, you completely change the perception of what it is you do and how good you are at that thing. So it's super important, in my opinion, for people to destroy this misconception that process optimization through technology is not a priority. That is the biggest priority in my, in my understanding because it's the single greatest driver towards revenue generation. So these are my top findings from attending gala 2024 but i would love to know also from you what you learned what you saw and stay tuned for more news here at beerworks